Hello, I'm Ron Miscavige, and this is another episode of Life After Scientology. And I have your favorite guest on today to uh, take up a point and enlighten you on something that is almost on the border of unbelievable. But we're going to get into it. So let me do a little business first, and that is this. If you care to support this program or the ongoingness of it, as I say, you can become a Patreon or you can do a one-time donation through PayPal. And the links to these both facilities are in the description uh, on this on this show. So without getting into any further business, because I've taken care of business, I got to tell you, Karen, I saw this on Tony Ortega and it is like, I have to say this because they finally showed their true colors. And what I mean by that is this, they finally were truthful about something. <laughs> and here's the truth of it. Scientology, and I think it was Mark Headley that described them as a cult disguised as a religion operating as a business. Because what they did, you don't do unless you are a business. And they call themselves a church, which it would be like me calling myself a rhinoceros. If you look at me, you can see I'm not a rhinoceros. I'm not a penguin. I'm a person. And if you look at them, they say they're a church. But anyway, let's get right into it. Karen, De, Karen DeLaCurie, welcome to the show. And I'm going to give you a one-man audience. Just, oh. Hooray! Ron, I'm a, can I just tell you something going on? This is Valentine, who is <laughs> absolutely sitting Look at black. Valentine is a cat, 30% blind. We've had the finest cat ophthalmologist see her eyes. She was born, born like that. And when we went to adopt from these cats, they said that people don't like, they, they want perfect cats. <laughs> no. So we took Valentine, and she is a love. She's just like I see that. Oh she's boy, licking me with her rough tongue as you've been talking. So anyway, I I, I want to give my full attention to the show. Uh, Valentine. Uh, okay, so I'm here with you, hundred percent. A cult disguised as a religion operating as a business yeah that's quite a good um that's that's cool that's says so much in one sentence well the word of the day the word of the week the word of the month is pandemic COVID-19 right and I want to tell you Ron that prisoners in California serial killers like who was that guy who killed off his pregnant wife and the Brits showed up in San Francisco Bay? Anyway, I don't know. They ripped off $1 billion of PP money. All went to prisoners who learned to game the system with pre and they were sent $1 billion. Well, the Church of Scientology, birds of a feather, the criminal cult of Scientology has successfully ripped off mega bucks that, <laughs> that were supposed to go to businesses. But look at the contrary facts. Doesn't Scientology swear up and down it's not a business? All the time. All the time. Law courts, spiritual, religion, ecclesiastical. Well, this whole program was designed to help businesses to pay staff who would become indigent. Some of them lose their properties, go into foreclosure, live on the streets as homeless. This was what it was designed for. Right. To avoid more people not going belly up and not going homeless. And of course, the Church of Scientology, the church, the cult of Scientology's op octopus tentacles moved right in to see what they could rip off from the U.S. government. Now, Ron, they don't pay taxes. 
they're off the, they got the IRS to get them off the hook. So they're not paying in anything. Right. They milk the US government for medical. They send 5,000 CO members. When they get medical, they send them for free medical and make the state or the county pay. They yeah. made Planned Parenthood pay for the hundreds, if not thousands of ab abortions that the cult of Scientology coerced young girls in their 20s and 30s. For 25 years, Planned Parenthood, which is funded by the US government, paid for those abortions. So whenever they have a chance to milk the US government, <laughs> they do. I want yeah. to show you a few, just a few pictures to give a little context here. And by the way, to back up what you're saying, you know, I was on staff for 26 and a half years. If I ever had a medical situation, it was always called um, workman's compensation. And the church would pay nothing and I would go and be taken care of under the workman's compensation laws, which the government would pay for my treatment. I mean, look, I was in the Marines more many years ago, back in the 50s. So I'm a Marine veteran, but I've served my time and, you know, and my willingness to help defend this country against the aggressors. And therefore, as a Marine veteran, I get my medical taken care of by the Veterans Administration Hospital here in Milwaukee. But that's only fair because I did what is expected to be done to gain that particular priority or perk, perk you would call it you know and with Scientology they claim they help people I, I'll tell you something the day they help somebody is a day I'd like to see <laughs> the greed of the cult yeah. Yeah. in fact Time Magazine called it the cult of greed I know yeah the greed is beyond anything you can even imagine they have no conscience in ripping off elderly seniors yeah. You know, take his blog, did a blog after blog of people in their 70s flown in, airline ticket paid, made to sit down, take out 20 credit cards all at the same time, max them to $70,000. Yeah, I remember the guy. No, there was more than one. Graham Berry got money back, Graham Berry, the lawyer. Now, the cult of Scientology's greed for money surpasses anything that you've ever known. And you know what their defense is for ripping off four point something million dollars? Yeah, 4.4 4. 4 million dollars, we added it up. Yeah. Do you know what their defense is? Oh, yeah. other religions are getting it. That's like a group of gangsters. We, we've got gangs in LA saying, well, we're not the only ones. The gang next door is also killing. The, that argument is other people are doing the same crime. So why you, So what's wrong with it? Because other people are doing it. Yeah. Imagine you and I went to a comment where we were accused of non-production or pr producing what we call a bad product. And we said, other staff are also doing it. <laughs> yeah. But let me tell you something about Comevs. Karen, I was on staff for 26 and a half years. I never saw a Comev a con that had anything to do with justice. Mm -hmm. If you were Comev, you were guilty. Mm -hmm. And if that Comev didn't prove it, they'd start another one to make sure yes. you were found guilty of the crimes. I they I'll tell you, it was like Torquemada in the Spanish Inquisition. If the Spanish Inquisition called her up, you might as well kiss your butt goodbye. You were guilty. Kangaroo courts. Yeah. <laughs> Scientology pretending ethics, pretending morality. Yeah. While they are, but and, and I speak from 40 years in. Yeah, I know. Everything they asked in training and uh, counseling, doing doing it day by day. I lived and breathed it. I will tell you. The cult of Scientology is crooked, but the banks don't know it. I know. This this is called, can you see this? Yes. 
This is called Nakanan Fresh Start. Wells Fargo gave them 481,447 dollars. They operate in Southern California. I'm going to have to talk to some Wells Fargo execs. You know the problem with this? Nobody's informing the banks. You know, you're right. The con that these are crooked, crooked, evil. People. Yeah, but you know, in, in in defense of the banks, you you got to admit when they go to do something, they have all of their photographers from Gold giving a presentation with bankers box full of stuff, and I, I guess they sound convincing, or else. You know, everybody at a bank, and there's a lot of them that did this, they all can't be plugged stupid. You know, the guy at a bank giving out the money, he's usually pretty careful as to who he gives money to. What do well, you think? I don't know. <laughs> there are banks that turn you down for a loan in the New York second. Yeah. Not someone, I have, I have impeccable credit, so I... <laughs> I get solicited to take out loans, which I never do. I don't believe in debt. But yeah. banks like Chase Manhattan, they've been on I know. Them. And Chase, now these banks will be asked to forgive these loans. So basically, these loans are a complete <laughs> ripoff. Right? Wow. The whole program entitles you to forgiveness of the loan. Yeah. Forgiveness means... Forget about being paid back, right? Now, here's the Church of Scientology of Michigan that got $91,000, this top one. Can you see it, Trump? Yeah, I can see it. Yeah, it's, it's a good uh, good picture of it there. PPP -P 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 money. Now, imagine how many people in Michigan who can't put bread on the table. Yeah. Who could have gotten that money? Yeah, absolutely. So then, the lender, they call it lender, which is, <laughs> they're not going to pay this back. Huntington National Bank. Here's the next one. Oh, I got to tell you something about this one. This one was $82,000. Do you see here? Yeah, this yeah. One here. It's called Mission of Los Feliz. Now, this is a bank I need to be in touch with. <gasps> this is Chase. This is Chase Manhattan. JB. Wow. Shall I tell you something about this mission of Los Feliz? It's a building donated by Patrick Renner, sort of a wannabe actor who yeah. got an inheritance, whatever. But, but he did something, and I'm not going to get into what he did. And as a kind of extortion blackmail, he had to donate this fancy building which he did. It's empty. There's never a car in the parking lot. There are no staff. There's a sign there saying, open by appointment only, Tuesdays and Thursdays at one o'clock to three. So twice a week, it's open for a couple of hours. And they got Chase Manhattan to give them $82,000. Whoa. $82,000. They don't have staff. This is supposed to be for businesses to pay staff. I they know that. Staff. They're open a couple of day, couple of hours twice a week. Now, you know, I, I didn't know that up until this point, but there was a place here. Well, I live in West Dallas, Wisconsin, and that's a block away from Milwaukee. They had a little office in a strip mall and they were open by appointment only for two hours at a time. So who's getting who? That's nothing. It's just a zero. So Patrick Rennett, did he put in for the loan? I guess he did, didn't he? I don't know. He's, he's there for name. On, I mean, he, he just gave the building on a, on, a, on a very shady extortion. 